Great to welcome back on board. Jamie Cullum, hello. Hi, how you doing? It's good to see you again. Great to see you again, too. Before we start the proceedings, a tradition. Thank you so much. Of course, see. the first time we met, you had a wonderful shot you were hangover. Oh. So I hope you like this one. Wonderful. Okay, so it says, now, is this shot you or is this sake? This is shot you. It's uh, called right. Mugi shot you. It's oh. a great one. Thank you so much. Now, Ed, what's the best way to drink this one? Oh, on the just, rocks. just on the rocks. Yeah, great. On the rocks. I will. Uh, I will enjoy some before the show. Uh, <laughs> anyway, now that's. I hope you still drink it. You know, I keep oh, doing yes. this, but you know. <laughs> no, I do. Do you know what? We. Uh, it's funny. The first day I got here, I went to a place called Hamamatsu. Yeah, yeah. To the Yamaha factory oh. uh, to see the pianos being made because yeah, yeah. I've never been before. And then I was very tired, but I, I got to uh, into Tokyo. My band arrived, and we said, "Oh, let's go out just to." So we don't go to bed too early, so we don't wake up too early because of the jet lag. And that night turned into going to bed at two o'clock. Uh, <laughs> Welcome with, to Tokyo. With, some, yeah. with plenty of shochu on the rocks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you so much. What do you love about Tokyo when you're here, apart from shochu? Um, I, uh, I truly love coming here. Uh, Japan in general, you know, I, I would choose to come here uh, more than I would many other places in the world. I think the people really make this a special place. Um, they're incredibly kind and that people here do things that you just that don't happen where I live and we got lost and we went up to a guy who was making it he, he had like a street food thing he was making it look like yakitori or something and we asked him how to get to the venue here and uh, he said oh um, uh, okay no, he spoke good English he turned his uh, gas thing off and he put a closed sign no way on his uh, thing, and he walked us to the venue. Wow. Uh, and this doesn't happen <laughs> where I come from. Yeah, so, like that way, yeah. you know. So th th that's, a, that's a one example. Uh, you know, I, I, like, I like buying clothes here. Clothes here are uh, amazing, as you know. And they fit you. Um, and they fit me really well. <laughs> um, I love the food, you know, I love the cuisine here. Um, and there's, you know, from, from Studio uh, Ghibli to, to uh, the classic uh, Japanese cinema, um, I've, I've even started to listen to some uh, to some uh, Japanese uh, piano man music. Oh. K here, my new friend. Right so on. you know, so there's, hey. yeah, it's, it's I love I love coming here, and the fans, of course, are incredible here. Go on then. Yeah, so. yeah. We haven't met for a couple of years. Um, probably a billion things. You know, a lot of water's gone under the bridge. But anything in particular you'd like to share with us from when we last met? Nothing's happened really, apart from I've got married and had two children. Oh, that's no, that's nothing. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, next. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. then how? How have children changed your life? Um, I mean, kind of practically, it's changed them a lot mm. uh, in terms of having less time. Um, but it's changed changed my life in every possible, beautiful, amazing way. Mm. Um, I certainly experience everything in life a lot more intensely now. Mm. I look at things in a much uh, more just a clearer, clearer way. And sometimes seeing things more clearly is not doesn't necessarily make you happier. I think you, you're more critical of life. You're more critical of yourself and your past and your future and the people around you and the world around you. And that's really good, I think, for songwriting. Mm. Um, when you're an artist, it's good to experience things like that. But, um, it's a, a, an amazing, amazing thing. It's amazing. Musicians always say music's the most important thing in their life. Parents always say their kids are the most important thing in their life. What happens when you've got both? Well, I mean, it, there's no question that it's the children and my family that I've created. But I believe that it, 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 it is, doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, my priority is my family, there's no, no, no question. That, you know, my touring life is very different now. I don't go away for long periods of time. Um, and so that is undoubtedly my priority. But what is great is that I find that focusing on my family enables me to create better, more interesting music. I feel I'm more fearless at the moment to make music. So um, hopefully it all works out for the better. Now, I was curious about that, how, um, how having children or, and a wife might change your music too. I think you, you care less about what other people think. Mm. So you take, I think I wouldn't have made momentum 10 years ago. Mm. I think, uh, you know, I would, have, I would have been frightened of the dreaded question, oh, you're not a jazz musician anymore. It's like, <laughs> it's just, you know, it, it's, it's, I think I, I was free to indulge myself in, in doing things that were more, a bit more out there. Mm. And you know, after I made Momentum, a uh, month after I finished Momentum, I went and cut a totally acoustic pure jazz album, mm. which I hadn't done for years. Mm. Again, with, without a sense of fear of what that really meant. Um, so I, th I think I think it's I think it's good. I think if you experience joy 
that purely and you experience something that is so intense, it can only be good for, for creating stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about you know your relationship with the piano and you mentioned about you know not being a true jazz musician, but um, you obviously absolutely love your piano, but you don't you, you don't seem to be precious about your piano or music. You kind of probably kind of rough to your piano, I think, sometimes too, yeah. Um, but also um, the piano pilgrimage, I'm curious about that series uh, that you did. Just, just tell us about your relationship with the piano. Yeah, I mean, the, the piano, I made a documentary for the BBC uh, about the fact that pianos used to be in everyone's front room. I don't know uh, if that was the case in Japan, but certainly in the UK and in, in, in Europe, you, uh, practically every middle class family had a piano in their living room, as that was their entertainment before televisions and before radios, so people would sit around the piano and that would be the entertainment. And there was a, a piano in every pub, there were pianos in every school, and now of course this is, well, my fear was that the piano itself was not as important as it used to be, but through the course of the documentary, I found that the piano is still, maybe not in everyone's front room, but still as important. Um, you know, for me, the piano is a riddle. It's, I fight with the piano. Really? I love the piano. I, it's like any good relationship, you know? <laughs> you love and you hate each other. How do you, how uh, do you fight with your piano? What, what, what gets you angry, upset, or...? Well, it's, it's like trying to figure out a person. It's, it's, mm. it's hard, and to master it will take me more than my lifetime. You know, I, 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 and I commit myself almost every day on trying to get better at the piano. And every time I hear a, a truly great piano player, I want to weep. Um, but that's the beautiful thing about it, it's, it's a drive to, to just, I'll never master it, but it's a drive to get better at it anyway. You're pretty good at it. Uh, <laughs> You're doing I mean, right so far. Yes, you know, it's very, there's no false modesty there, you know, it's, mm. um, it's a beautiful riddle, mm. but it's nonetheless a riddle. Mm. Actually, I'm curious as well about the, you know, mastering an instrument and your, you know, your art, uh, as opposed to creating music that just makes a lot of people happy. There's, there's obviously a dichotomy there, I mean, you probably fall somewhere in the middle there because you're doing both. Well, I think, you know, making people happy um, is obviously important, but I think I, one of the things I noticed now with social media, you know, on Twitter, I, I, you get to hear what your fans feel directly after a show. They all appreciate the evolution. Mm. And I think my fans in particular, um, obviously, you know, I'm not making the same music I was 10 years ago when they first fell in love with me, but I'm growing and developing, and, mm. and I think um, that kind of development Although I'm trying to get better, they are appreciating the, the, the growth yeah. and the change and uh, the development. That's, so that, that's, that's, where, that's where me and my fans are at. So you haven't made your best music yet? Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I hope not. I, 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 and I, don't, I, certainly, I certainly don't feel as though I have. I think there is something about the music you make when you're really young and you're first discovering, you know, your first taste of fame and your first record deal and the first time people really hear your music. There is something about those early days that you could never recapture, you know, mm. whether it's Bob Dylan's first records or the Beatles' first records or, or um, you know, the, the first Rolling Stones records, you know, they all make different music now, mm. but uh, it's whether you change and develop and grow into something uh, that is reflective of who you are and what your heart tells you to be. Mm. On your website you say you love to go and uh, get into your, your room or your studio and go and bang the drums. Do you still do that? Does that help you create music? Certainly, turning turning up to an instrument that is not my first instrument is, is a great way to start inspiration carrying. What I do in this, the first thing I do when I go in the studio is uh, I have a huge collection of vinyl records in my studio. I go in there and I put on something that I haven't listened to in a while, whether it's Iggy Pop and the Stooges or, um, or a Miles Davis record or some Stravinsky or an old, I don't know, like mid 90s hip hop record or something and turn up really loud just really get in the zone with some music and then pick up an instrument that I don't play very often. Mm. And then that is a good way to inspire me. Mm. Where does your music, where do the melodies come from? You know, I, I'm, it's the thing in the world I wish I could do. You know, where does a melody come from? I wish I knew, I mean, I don't know. Mm. All I know is that there's 128 voice messages on my phone that are melodies that I come up with, you know, in the last kind of two months. So I recorded one, uh, what's that? bit in Shibuya where everyone's crossing the road. Oh yeah, the big crossing, angle. Shibuya yeah. crossing. Yeah. yeah, I had a melody after nearly getting run over. <laughs> and I had a melody after I realised I was crossing the road and no one else was. Because here they <laughs> wait till the green man, even if they have no right. cars. <laughs> and I would cross over and I could tell that that was not the done thing. Uh, <laughs> and I had a melody just after that. <laughs> so I recorded it on my phone. 
Um, well, back to, to the UK then, if um, for any of your fans heading to the UK, give us a, or share a great British music destination. Uh, well, okay, well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot. There's a lot of great music uh, destinations. There's one, uh, uh, one that I went to recently, um, it was more of a deep place, it's not so much a place where bands play, but uh, they have amazing DJs there. Um, it's in East London, it's called Village Underground, and the last two DJs I saw there were Questlove from The Roots, DJ, amazing uh, DJ set where he played um, the original samples and then the hip hop song it became, like kind of mixing them and that was incredible. Uh, Erica Badu DJed there recently as well, which was also amazing. So that, that's, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good one to go to. Nice Just down the road from the Ace Hotel, stay in the Ace Hotel and uh, head down to Village Underground and you'll have a good night. Nice tip. You fly around the world a lot. Um, what do you listen to when you're flying? Can you recommend some great flying music? Uh, on this trip, um, I listened to a, 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 a debut album from an amazing young London music producer called East India Youth, uh, which is it's quite intense. Mm. Uh, but that was a, that was that was a beautiful record. And the new Arc Arcade Fire record I really love as well. Yeah. I think you know they're an incredible band, and their new record has not let me down. Mm. Nice choices. I'm curious about what's going to happen in the future of Jamie Cullen. Uh, we had the Grammys just recently. Pharrell Williams, of course, won all those awards with Daft Punk. Mm. But you got him first with your collaboration. Um, any, um, any ideas of who you might collaborate with in the future or who you'd like to work with? Well, I've been uh, talking to Pharrell again. Really? Uh, yes, we I are mean... due to meet in the studio again this year. So hopefully uh, uh, Pharrell. Um, I've been uh, making plans to spend some piano time with Mr. Elton John. Really? Uh, yeah. So, he's still um, so active. Yeah. I mean, he just keeps yeah. on making music and he's just doing lots of stuff. Well, so we had kids at exactly the same time. Oh. So our kids are exactly the same age. So and we, we don't live very far away from each other outside of London. So we've, we've hung out a little bit with our, our kids, which oh, is cool. really cool. And uh, we keep threatening to try and write a song together. So that maybe... Uh, piano duet? I don't know, but um, every time I see him, uh, I'm too... Uh, I'm too in awe, really. He's so disarmingly lovely, mm. um, but I'm too in awe to really kind of pin down a, a co-writing session. But he said he'd love to try something, so maybe this time uh, the, it, it'll happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look forward to that. Yeah. Jamie, have a wonderful time. I know you're, you're super busy and touring all over the place. It just keeps on going. Keep giving us some great music. Thank As you very much. Great to see you. Thank you too. You. Thanks.